Well, what is up, Shark Nation? Welcome back. Mark Baker's out there in Greystones. We're live. Or sorry, I'm from Greystones. Uh, he's out there in Glenageary. Uh, we are live uh, in Greystones Studios. Uh, it's been about a it's been over a month since we recorded one of these, Mark. How are you getting on? Yeah, don't be letting people behind the scenes like that. Uh, yeah, <laughs> a little bit of a little bit of uh, admin there over the last few weeks that kind of kept us away from doing our passion here. Um, but over the last few weeks, we've welcomed a beautiful baby boy, Seamus. Welcome to Seamus, uh, Seamus Curry, uh, to the to the to Shark Nation, I guess. Mark, what do you think? Yeah, just a few weeks old, but he with a name like that, he could be fifty or sixty. Yeah, you know he's. Yeah, it's going to be great. He's going to be. It's, it's be baby Shay. You know Shay when he's a baby and when he's a child, and then maybe Seamus when he's got like a big red beard or something. Um, <laughs> kind of where the 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 jury's out whether he's kind of strawberry blonde. We don't know. We don't know what's going on there. But uh, he's a beautiful baby boy, and we're delighted to have him. So we're yes, getting indeed. with all those uh, midnight feedings, all that type of stuff. Um, so we're uh, having a great time actually so again the the name of this podcast is going to be 2020 a great year uh, we're coming up to the end of the year and uh, me and Mark are saying you know you can you can go you can go to any news outlet um, or anything like that and get your negativity about 2020 I think Netflix had, just have a documentary called uh, death to 2020 or something very negative you know it was a whole year of some of our, all of our lives <laughs> so um, yeah I won't be watching that unless they're putting a positive spin on it saying you know good riddance to 2020 but i'm not a big fan of that seeing the the back of a year it's yeah. nothing different is really going to change january 1st it's just a continuation you know but if okay. if yeah nobody wants to to kind of dwell on it too much but it's it's in our faces all the time so i'm sick of the kind of negativity so we're well we're not like that anyway so for sure and you know what? I think I was saying this to, to my wife earlier on. We were going for a stroll. Uh, we were saying that I find like the uh, like RT News or any of the news outlets are kind of going mad a little bit. That Brexit seems to be ironing itself out, and uh, and with the the pandemic and the um, the um, what's called the the vaccine seems to be rolling out now. They're kind of going mad a little bit. It's no, they're kind of trying to come up with different little bits. Like, oh, it's not actually getting better. It's, uh, you know, so. Yeah, that's what, when, when we listed out before the podcast, a few things to, to focus on for this episode. One of, the, one of them is learnings. Yeah. And one, something I wrote down was actually, I learned um, a bit more about how mainstream media works. It, was, it just became a bit more obvious what they were doing. And they have to get visitors, whether it's clicks or listeners or viewers or whatever it is, you know, if it if it if it bleeds, it leads that type of thing. That's so true. You can really see that. I just think it's been amplified in the last year, and it's actually really bad when when you when you think about it. So that's on my list of things to to do less of. Yeah, media. Interesting. Um, okay, so we've got actually a lot of co- lot to cover here today about twenty twenty. How how uh, it was a great year, like we're saying. Um, so why don't we talk about some of the learnings that we had? I mean, at the beginning of this year. Uh, me and Mark set out to set up the Shark Pod, and we thought we'd do fifty-two episodes, do one every week. Um, we're going to probably record fifty-two, but it'll probably get fifty-one out <laughs> by the end of the year. Um, so we are we're well on our way there, and we were just looking back over something, or going looking back over all of our uh, episodes there, and we it's something that we're very proud of what we've put together, and it's something that has gone better than we could even have thought at the beginning. I mean, beginning of 2020 in January, when we started this, um, there was no listeners at all. We've reached thousands and thousands of listeners and we've um, been downloaded in 43 countries, I think at this stage, really amazing, uh, amazing stuff. Not only, not only that, like, like some, a lot of the people I talk to, a lot of my friends um, who are interested in podcasting, all that type of stuff, they'll say, you know, how much is your kind of weekly day or your monthly downloads and stuff like that, which is fun to, it's fun to watch as well, um, but the most important thing is that we're you know talking to interesting people, networking with these people, just trying to get some inspiration, get some um, get some knowledge of, of these uh, people who are really really high level uh, achievers. And we've done we've really done that. I was looking through some of the the people, and I'm kind of like, how do we get all these people <laughs> every week to come on and talk to us for like two hours? You know? Yeah, it's it's not as if we we ask everybody in the world to come on either. Like you know, most people that we do ask do come on and I'm quite quite grateful in the earlier episodes because they could they didn't really know what they were coming on to but now you know, people can just flick through and have a look and the, you know see who they know or and have a little listen and then that might put them at ease and they'll come on but if, if, to go back to 
the the shark pod and, and last January. The reason was the reason to do the podcast was to meet interesting people. Think about why we we started the podcast. It was to meet interesting people. It was to increase our network um, of get together a, a, like a group of like minded people that kind of stuff. And it wasn't actually to make money, you know, so we weren't tracking statistics and our, you know, any, any kind of trackers really keeping an eye on the, on the listeners, but it wasn't to make money. And that was the nice part about it. So we're, if we're thinking of, it'd be, yeah, it would be nice to monetize a podcast, of course, but like, if we're thinking about, was it a success? Yeah. We got out, you know, nearly 52, like we said, we done it professionally. I think we've done it quite well. You know, I think we can pat ourselves on the back. Um, but most importantly, we, we just met people who we never would have met before. And, and that became virtually because we couldn't obviously do it face to face. So, yeah. That's exactly. That's kind of a good point as well. Because at the beginning, we were going to do it all face to face. And it kind of sounds crazy now with the, the COVID year that everyone had, that how we would just assume we would go meet people. Um, but I think that we've actually got higher profile or maybe um, uh, more kind of remote guests than we would have got. I mean, we've spoken to people um, like Mark Tanner, CEO out there in um, out there in Australia, and we've also had people on from the states. Um, you know, stuff that we wouldn't have really uh, gone for at the beginning, and um, now we've really kind of uh, had the ability to talk to anybody. You know, mm. um, and we've for me and Margaret, we're gonna we're gonna talk about some uh, we're gonna call out some guests in particular here later on. But we're going back through the the back catalog there, and there's ones that we even forgot about that were you know really uh, great great chats, and we learned a lot from. So, Mark, let's 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 kick this off. Um, let's say, what was the, so 2020, uh, what would be your kind of, uh, your highlights of the year for you from a business and a lifestyle design uh, point of view? So me personally, as in, okay. Yeah, the, yes. So, yes. yeah, well, I kind of split my, my things up into my main job, my main business, which is recruitment with Darwin Hawkins. And there's the art and there's, you know, the kind of stuff online, they can emerge by Amazon, stuff like that. And now the podcast. So it's probably in four, four different kind of, what do you call them? Quadrants or whatever. Um, so yeah, look, it was, it was a big, COVID had a huge impact on, on everybody. We do finance recruitment. We're, we're, we're sector agnostic in that we don't, we're not overly focused on aircraft leasing or hospitality or any of those kind of areas that were affected. So Whereas we were affected like everybody at the start. Um, all in all, it got better from June onwards, I'd say. It got better and better every month. Um, right. for us. And therefore, I would imagine for most businesses and the economy in general, even though you look at RT News and it tells you, you know, the sky is falling. But if, if we're busy in a, a sector agnostic recruitment, albeit finance and everybody can work from home, you know, um, well then everybody else must be doing kind of getting a little bit better besides the obvious now pubs and restaurants. So happy enough, all things considered, uh, we had quite, I, I'm, obviously I discussed with you personally, we, we had a, a strong, a strong finish to the year and all that and, and lots of plans for next year. So yeah, look, there was pros and cons to, to that, to that, obviously the impact on that, I'd say working from home was one of the best things that's, that's come about from, from COVID. I think it's pushed, forward you know that kind of working from home thing i think that was probably going to happen i would have said like six seven eight years maybe that that kind of working from home at the at the advancement yeah. that it is right now um would have been could have been 10 years away who knows but like so with, especially you know with the banks or, or some of the more kind of slower to to go with the tech side of things i think that that's a really interesting point because there's a couple of things I, th I think about that, about the work from home thing. It pushed everyone to say, okay, you have to make it uh, easy for people to work from home because of the COVID stuff. Um, but I think here's like, it. what are the outcomes of that? One, people are going to be uh, fleeing big cities with big rents. I think that's already happened. Mm -hmm. Some of my friends have already moved to, to the country. Uh, they've got remote contracts. Um, I myself have come completely remote and I thought I'd never be, that type of person uh, but for me it just made sense um after getting used to not uh commuting in the rain uh you know packed in on a dart you know for 90 minutes a day um mm -hmm. so but one of the things is i think there's going to be a huge impact on middle managers you know those people who yeah. always want everyone to be in on time geez you strolled in here five minutes later thinking that they're adding any value whatsoever 
Yeah, they tend to uh, carry around uh, notebooks like this a lot. Yeah. <laughs> so Mark is and walk walk just a little bit faster than everybody else. Yeah. They're important, and they have to they have to be somewhere, but nobody actually follows them and sees where where they're going. I think those jobs are are going to get more and more. Um, uh, you know, uh, they're being found out. Like yeah. the people don't need to be managed nearly as much as pe- as people thought. Um, but I also think people who do that and who tend to do that and are in those positions, a lot of people are brilliant, brilliant people. They just fallen into that trap and they're actually maybe playing the role that playing the game in that regard. But the game, not to be cheesy, but you know, the game has changed. It has changed. Yeah. From that point of view. I actually did a did a blog post on on LinkedIn before I, I, I closed my laptop for Christmas, just talking about the, the benefits of, you know, for us and it was kind of just looking at it here work-life balance has improved obviously like i'm able to bring the kids to school collect them all that kind of stuff i was never able to do that i was gone from seven to seven yeah so i'm, I'm sure that's that's had a huge impact on them as well and i think that's actually way more healthy than the weird kind of norm that we've had for the last you know whatever 60 years um focus has improved i'm able to focus a lot more now that people aren't kind of walking around and and I have to, you know, go to as many meetings as I was, although the meetings, I still do think face-to-face meetings still have to happen and are still going to be beneficial and they will come back. Yeah. Um, but you can batch work. We've talked about that in the past. That that was being, I've got a lot done. Some days feel, you might feel like you don't get that much done working from home, as you probably know, like, because you've done, you've worked from home for, for longer than most. Um, but definitely I'm more productive but I'd like to, what I'd like to do is to push those three productive days into, you know, Monday to Wednesday, and then maybe Thursday, Friday, have an office, and and yeah. you know, do all the other kind of important stuff. Have office hours in that traditional way where there's four meetings. Like so, we'll do all our meetings on a Friday, and then we might go yeah. out for. <laughs> do you know what I mean? So you can kind of mix it in with uh, that type of social element. And I think like there's a few kind of memes out there, or you know, I think maybe it's just people don't get it or advertise it's so there's a few advertising things i've seen on tv where uh you know everyone's working from home and oh you know your cat's skiving off you know uh you know move your mouse so it looks like you're on those people are finished that's not mm. that you're going to be able to do anymore if mm. if you in a, you're in a job where that's that's what you're trying to do and i've been in those jobs like you know uh working in finance and stuff where it wasn't mm. it for me and i want to do as little as possible you, you're all, you're gone and you should be gone as in it's better for your life if you do something else with it <laughs> true yeah i think i think if, if it was like you can work from home for a month or whatever and people are like oh i can take advantage of this that's different you might be able to get a handy month in, in if you if you do that but like the whole work environment has changed the the, the process has changed so if you're able to actually have a job from home and able to to just us and you know leave the book on the keyboard and it's, it keeps you online well actually that's that's the management's fault for actually having a job that your your output is is only measured you know is it, your output isn't good enough then if you can actually do that you know yeah so. it's, a, it's an interesting thing and then i was thinking like the the leverage that the work from home thing gives you as well like it, i know that i was i was working internationally and up until recently i never really sold software in ireland uh, up until the last six months or so um but i would have a meeting say in saudi arabia uh in the morning uh and then i'd be in germany in the afternoon and the evening i'd be taking calls uh with my partners in spain and it was just i was getting all this you know crazy leverage just from my box room uh, from my little office um mm. and then once i put down my laptop i'm in Greystones. i'm on my bike i'm going to the gym um i'm here for dinner every day i'm starting a new family um this is all great stuff you know mm. so it depends it, it's it, the people that say that they don't like working from home and i understand say if you've got four kids running around and you don't have the space and stuff like that mm. um, maybe you should organize a space to work that isn't around people is there a pod that you can rent is that up to you yeah what's what, i think what you take the take the like anytime i hear people uh complaining i always think is there anything that you can do to change that what what have you done about that then joe sorry i'm in that kind of mood but anyway mark come on <laughs> yeah well it's looking forward it's not going to change for the next six months let's say like and, and it's only going to change in six months time as in get back to normal and have more people in and around the city and stuff 
purely because of the vaccine, you know, which is which nobody can take credit for except for the people who produce the vaccine. Um, even though people like to take credit for it, but um, so yeah, I'd be thinking if I wasn't thinking already, I, I'd, I'd be thinking now, where am I gonna? What's my work setup gonna be? I, I couldn't. I, I'm lucky. I have a, a room here I can do it in. But I couldn't do it from the kitchen table. I don't know how people do that. So yeah, that's tough. I'd be really thinking, what can I do? Is it, I, you can't even go to a cafe. That's the other thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not everybody has that luxury, but it, um, yeah, it's not going to change. And it's kind of, I, I love the self-direction has always been my, my thing anyway. I'm self-directed. I want, I'll be doing my own thing. I've got my own, I want to make it because again, I think a big part of, um, a big part of, I think, enjoyment is of work and working this way compared to working in an office or whatever. Um, even when I was in an office, because I'm not, I'm not, have a, I don't have a fixed income. So the better I do, the the better I do. And I think um, you're in that case, you're a business owner. The, the more, you know, revenue guys make, the better, obviously. But if you're, um, if you're in a position where you're working from home and you're at the kitchen table and you get the same, whether you take a three hour lunch or you don't, mm-hmm. uh, I can see why people would be, uh, yeah, you know, that's going to be tough. Maybe it will move. Maybe the jobs will move more towards value add than, yeah, there are, are, are just, there will be targets there. Maybe there's going to need to be targets put in place for, for all sorts of administration kind of tasks. And if you get them done, well, then you can, you know, log off or you, you get bonuses or whatever. They're going to have to drive people, give people incent- incentivize people differently. I think now, for all sorts of roles, not just sales, not just business development. I think it was, I don't know if it was Warren Buffett or his uh, sidekick, uh, Charlie Munger. Um, but uh, they say that uh, if you can spend your time working on incentives, don't work on anything else. That's going to be the main uh, yeah, main thing to drive people. So it's an interesting thing. So like uh, in this year, um, so we're talking about the work from home. Uh, I think yeah. everyone got a lot closer to that four hour work week lifestyle design. You were not saying that you're, you're working four hours a week, but at least you're getting to set up the, your work day a little bit more, a little bit more power. And um, some people like that, some people didn't. Uh, for me, it really worked. Um, I think that there's going to be the kind of knock on effect is that employers are going to say, right now, they can't hire people outside of Ireland to do your job. Right. That's the only thing stopping them is a, a tax um, mm-hmm. setup. Um, that's changing. People are going to be able to work from, uh, work from, bulgaria and do your job soon they're going to sort that out because that's what the pressure is from big business on government right so once they can do that you'll you'll be competing on a income for income basis of um you know of of someone in bulgaria i would say at first definitely just the eu say but there's there's a, um, a better value economies within the eu with very high education standards you know you could anywhere in eastern europe you know, they're out there playing chess for fun. <laughs> True. Yeah. You know? So these guys are going to be uh, coming coming for your job. So this is what I was thinking here, Mark, and something to think about. Uh, a game game changing thought for 2020. Something that I'm kind of taking away. And I know we kind of uh, we list these things out and then we kind of spitball along <laughs> the way. But uh, one of the one of the the things that are key takeaways for me is which we got to make a decision, right? You can be either the person who is uh, waiting for your job to be outsourced, um, like so many um, like so many manufacturing jobs um, that went before you, um, you might be in a high, highly paid service job that someone in, you know, in Croatia can do a lot cheaper than you. Soon you'll be competing directly with them and they're going to work harder probably. And they're going to be, uh, you know, that they're going to be as effective if not more effective right so you can wait for that okay or you can be in the position of the company who takes advantage of that so they're the two the two options that you have there is no other option for those i, I don't think this is my opinion i don't think there's an option to sit back and be passive anymore either you are somebody who is a you know even high tech uh, jobs like um, you know coders and stuff like that say if they're sitting here uh, in Ireland getting paid big inflated uh, wages because there's a there's a the demand is higher than the the supply um, when the tax thing changes and when uh, companies can uh, hire remote workers in Eastern Europe your, your wages will be halved 
you know, there's no mm-hmm. way around that. Um, so you've got to make a decision. One, sit around and wait for that to happen. Maybe upskill, maybe kind of sidestep into something that's a little bit more kind of face to face or kind of like maybe like project management within that kind of a, a, a cog uh, or kind of a linchpin rather than a cog. Yeah. Um, so do something like that. Or you need to start a company, set up everything in that company to to take advantage of rem- remote workers all over Europe that's coming maybe 18 months from now. They're, they're the options. Uh, mm-hmm. The good news is you'll probably be, be more successful with the latter, even though it takes a little bit more risk, a little bit more kind of gall. What do you think? Well, I, I think a lot of people will, like a lot of people will do that, but not a lot of people are of that kind of mindset and of that just naturally, just not entrepreneurial, you know, just, they just aren't. And that's fine. And that's a good thing for, for people who are, because it would be so hard to actually, you know, start a business, have a successful business. If everybody was, think how competitive that would be. That's what I love about entrepreneurship, like this entrepreneurs and uh, there's actually not that many really. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> when you think about it, <laughs> you met the people who, who are employed and happily, happily. So I think basically, I think everybody's going to have to up, up their game now, everybody. Yeah. And my opinion, it's very hard to up your game if you're in something that you don't, you're not enjoying. So I would say pivot into something more enjoyable. Maybe it's that linchpin in the company as well, or going to go into something completely different work that you're going to enjoy and you're going to put a hundred percent into because some people are working on, you know, 50% and that's been getting them by, but to try go 50 to 75% in a job you kind of like, or it's kind of okay. It's tough in my opinion, I'd say. Absolutely. Cool. Any other do differently looking back on 2020 that you'd say, okay, knowing what I know now, I get a be- I've written down, I get a better chair. Okay. Yeah. So erg- ergonomics important. Yeah. Well, yeah. S- I move, move more. Like I, I've been going to the gym and stuff like that, which is fine, but that's, that's an hour out of your day. I find personally, I find working from home, there's less reason to get up out of my chair. Um, again, it coincides with the kind of productivity. I'm probably more productive because I'm not getting up out of my chair. Everything is, is, is in with arms region. There's no, very little distractions. You know, the kids are good. They don't distract me that much and they're in school. Um, but yeah, better chair for sure. Um, uh, what else? Um, structure my day better, I think. Um, it's hard to know when when the day ends, I think. Um, so whether that is leaving the house at half five or, or four or wherever it is, going for a walk and coming back, you know. That's it then. That's the the end of the work day yeah otherwise it's just like a, a long a long kind of week of you know just mer- everything's merging into the one thing and what what are you and i'm i'm okay because i'm doing something that i want to do that's okay but it's i don't think that's a good thing in general i think you need i know what you mean it's kind of like it, okay. it got a little bit i know what you mean it's got a little bit like groundhog day sometimes um because it was Groundhog like, week groundhog you know week. what i mean like it's it's <laughs> It's all the one, yeah. you know? Again, the stuff that we can do to, especially when things get back to normal with the, uh, with the vaccine, all that type of stuff, or normal-ish, where you should break it up like, um, like you know, whether that's a five-a-side or uh, a volunteer day that you do in the evening or you bring your kids to the movies on Thursdays or that type of stuff, you know? If, yeah. If, if movie theaters still exist, we'll see. It's a strange... Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh- well, look, we we did a, like a bit of a survey of of our clients and candidates, and I always asked them, "What would you, what would your preference be? Are you missing the office and stuff like that? Are you, you know, would you work from home fully?" And it was it seems to be either three days in the office, two days from home, or vice versa. So everybody's like the majority of people want that split. Very rare amount that actually want, and it's probably just to do with their setup and stuff at home. But not a lot of people want five days from home. Um, so I do think when that comes in probably going to be June, I'd say, at least. Um, that will break up the week a little bit better. But yeah. right now, it's five days of, you know, all merging in together. So uh, The good thing is, people like me and you who are 
uh, and the people, a lot of our listeners would be goal oriented. So they're at least they spend the time moving towards them. Do you know what I mean? Like they're, imagine if, if you were working a job where if, if you worked really hard or you didn't, it wouldn't really matter. You know, you can get, get it done in your sleep type of thing. Um, I think that would be a nightmare. Do you know if it's the same day doing that all the time? But yeah. uh, do different these for me. There was a couple, like there's one here that I, I think, uh, I think taking more risks this year was kind of a, a year where I didn't take any risks. Um, a very much, a very uh, kind of defensive year. Um, it was the best year ever financially. Uh, for every, everything that, uh, you know, could improve, improved dramatically, um, which is really, you know, I was going to say lucky, maybe not lucky, but a lot of people in this, uh, in these times have not been that way. So I'm, you know, f- you know, I'm grateful that I had the opportunity to, you know, uh, make as much money as I did. Um, and, but I didn't take enough, like for, here's a good, a good example. Like during the, the first COVID um, um, kind of hit, the stock market went down, whatever, for like 40% or something. I mm-hmm. knew it was going to come back. And I had all this, uh, all this uh, liquid, uh, liquid assets I could have just doubled my money with. I knew it was going to happen, but I couldn't pull the trigger. I sat there thinking about it. Um, and it's happened a few times um, uh, kind of since during the year. Um, because it's it, like it was. If you look at all these types of things in the past, it's very, very simple. Even if it didn't go back, like like our friend, uh, one of our guests, uh, Michael Houghton, um, said, like uh, if you weren't right then, you would be right in the long term anyway. Do you know, it was everything was a forty. All this stock was a forty percent off sale. Do you know? Um, yeah. So there's something I could have, and I don't. I didn't. It's like I didn't even need the money. I could. Have, I could have lost it, and nothing would have changed. <laughs> do you know? So yeah. that's the type of uh, thing I, I want to do a little bit more in 2021. Uh, we'll do a podcast on 2021 about uh, in early January about um, where, where we're going to go with the year, all this type of stuff. We just need some time to think about that. But something to think about. Um, I was listening to somebody, I don't know who it was, one of those people on YouTube, uh, business uh, people. Um, and they were, he was saying that what we should be thinking of if we're going into doing a venture or doing a project or something, it's like how, we, how can we kind of leverage up risk on this? Because if it's worth doing, it's worth putting a lot of risk on to make sure that you're uh, you're, you're up for it. Um, yeah. It's like anything. If you say, if you know, with our uh, Koch Tober, you know, um, not hitting the the body fat re- reduction, nothing really happened. Um, if I put five thousand up, I wouldn't have eaten anything for a month. Yeah. <laughs> you know yeah. I, mean? no. yeah. <laughs> but, I think any any th- any time I've taken a big risk and obviously starting a bit, leaving a permanent pl- employment and starting a business is biggest risk you can take financially i i made it work like you you really make it work when there's that much on the line you'll make it work and and it's hard to believe that you can actually do as as much as as when you look back on the year and say oh my god did we go from zero to that amount of money uh, starting from scratch yeah but because it was sink or swim so you have to burn the boats in that regard or you know what is going to make you, you you do something? It's usually financial. It's usually, you know, you got to put money into something. You got to invest actually a serious amount of money into something in order to see it to completion or step up, step it up that amount that it needs to succeed. Um, I, I, accountability is great. And, and it has worked with the podcast. It's worked as well. You know, we said we want to do this amount and people are expecting them every week and stuff like that. I do think accountability is, is one thing, but then also having, a, you know, something on the line you know, skin that, in the game that's the that's the and it's skin the most, in the game at the end of that yeah that's exactly what it is skin is so, the game. so like, what we're gonna do are we say we're gonna do from like whatever challenge we got to make sure it's enough to uh to, to follow it through yeah 100 percent. and i think there's even stuff even if you're if you're like me and you're not uh like a entrepreneur in that way that you work for a big company but you're in sales you're in some sort of um target-based environment i think there are ways to make it more risky I, I don't know if there's any employers out there that will if you go go to them with a you know especially if it's maybe if it's a smaller company as well where they have a little bit more flexibility you can go in and say okay uh, i'll take a little bit less in base but i want more upside if i get mm. i think i can get this much i think this might be my pitch later on this week mark um yeah. so, <laughs> that's what i'm gonna say i'm gonna say i want more you know because it's the upside that makes things fun it's not the but it's also it makes things hard so it's how, how hard do you want to work yeah but if you're sitting there with all the energy in the world and frustrated in your job or whatever it may be 
that's the solution. If you, but if you're actually not interested in putting loads of work in, don't ask for, don't ask for less, less base, more, more bonus type of thing. Yeah. I just think if I was an employer and someone came to me and say, Hey, listen, I just want a bigger bonus. I don't really care about this base. Let me earn X amount. Give me a bit of bigger percentage on the back end. It's like Arnold Schwarzenegger with the, with twins. Uh, yeah. Nothing on the front end because they thought it wouldn't work. And then he asked for money in the back end. He made the most he ever out of anything he's ever done. Okay. Uh, so thinking of, thinking of things last year that, that you didn't follow through or that you wanted to achieve, but you, you felt you, you didn't do it and, you know, fully. Is there anything that you could think of? There, so we actually, we actually just got the, uh, the Amazon, the merch man, Amazon thing at the beginning in January, me and Mark said that I was going to start that because I had this account that I wasn't really using. Um, and we just actually more driven by Mark than me, but um, we've kind of got that up and running in the last month and that's starting to be cash flow positive. Um, not a huge amount, but it's like when you get that free, uh, when you get that check into the, into the bank account from Amazon and you, you didn't do any of the shipping, you don't do any of the returns and stuff. Um, I think I text Mark. You didn't do any of the designs either, Luke. I, oh, listen, right? I did, I did. <laughs> this is guys. This is the lesson here. If you own the real estate, you get the rent. It's your account. You know? Yeah. Uh, so this is a, a a life lesson. But I think once you get that uh, that the kind of mailbox money that Matthew McConaughey does, we talking about. Uh, I think I text Mark and I said, I don't know. I'm not going to work tomorrow. This is over. <laughs> I said, fuck this. This is uh, why would I do anything else? Um, so I think I told this on the podcast before but I remember going around with my dad uh, when he was uh, collecting he had vending machines on the side and he was collecting money from the vending machines and I was about five or something and he turned to me and goes I don't know why I have a fucking like you know other businesses this is the easiest money I'm selling Snickers getting paid you know anyway <laughs> and uh, yeah so I think that's uh, that's that's kind of one of my takeaways how can we how can we risk this up um, and, and make it interesting um, I think like, we could have done that with I don't know how we did that with podcast. We could have, um, we could have invested. Well, no, we actually, in my opinion, we actually done well with the podcast. You know what I mean? We, we, we have it up and running very, very, very well and quite easy to do and stuff like that. So it would be more for next year. How could we, what do we want? You know, is it, it's obviously more ears, you know, more listeners. Um, Bigger community, a little bit more connected with the people that are listening. Yeah. That'd be good. It's 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 difficult with the main platforms for getting people on getting people's ears is actually visual. It's it's Instagram. It's yeah. you know reading from Twitter or, or Facebook, or whatever. You know nobody really looks on Facebook pages anymore, really. But um, it's yeah, inter- very very difficult. It's interesting as well because I've been I've kind of stopped listening to not stopped listening to podcasts, but I don't have the commute anymore. Mm. Um, in the gym, I'm listening to music. Do you know, can I? So um, I'm I'm listening to, I'm listening to a lot of YouTube because they're the things that I can just go into and I'm, I'm really uh, getting into some of those. So uh, we'll, we'll go offline, Mark. I've got some ideas for next year from a format point of view. So uh, yeah. keep, uh, keep that in mind here, but let's, let's have a chat about these guests that we had uh, over the year. Maybe have a quick look back. If people are listening here, you can always go back and have a look, listen at some of our uh, favorites here. Me and Mark were saying we didn't want, we wanted to do like kind of a, like an awards uh, <laughs> show, but we had such great guests. We didn't want to say, Oh, this one was the best. This one's better than that one because they're all different. And um, we respected their time coming on, having a chat with us, every single one of them. Uh, and we've we actually enjoyed every every guest uh, um, speaking for myself here, but I think we both enjoyed um, all the guests that we had on, uh, and some of them are so surprising. So we're gonna say like we're gonna have different takes on this. So like uh, the first one here I have is most surprising. Uh, so Mark, who's your most surprising guest? If you had to pick one, um, surprising. I actually didn't, yeah. didn't think these true properly. Um, I would say. Um, Probably, I actually don't. I actually can't think of any. <laughs> I don't want to, who's yours? Graham Kenny. I was sure. going to say Graham, but I wanted to save him for maybe a different one. Okay, okay. So Graham Kenny for me it was most surprising because you had booked uh, him and you you had sent me his Instagram. Um, lots of uh, like a great Instagram. If anyone wants a, a good follow, just to see what uh, see what Graham is doing on getting on or what how he's getting on. Um, I knew nothing about the legal system. I knew nothing about um, property deals and stuff like that that he was talking about. It was just the man could spin a yarn, you know. Um, yeah. And you know, it's uh, the the feedback we got on that was amazing. A lot of uh, 
a lot of kind of young solicitors, uh, you know, just getting going in the game. Uh, gave us great feedback there. So well, Graham's obviously he's well, he's well known in 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 the business world and and yeah. property and, and and legal as well. But I felt like we uncovered a, a bit of a, a gem there when it came to podcast guest. Yeah. I think any podcast, if they want a great guest with great stories yeah. and great lessons and great work ethic and even you know what he does now still with, with jujitsu and, and his cycles and his swimming every day and being a concert pianist on the side yeah like he could go on and on and on yeah. uh he could have a, he should have his own podcast really yeah. but um yeah no i agree with you there he he was uh he was he was brilliant was there anyone there that was like a that particularly inspiring i say after we hung up we were just like wow this is something that you know, if someone is out there listening who's a young person getting into a business or, you know, even, it doesn't have to be business, yeah. lifestyle design stuff. We've got great people like Mesa and stuff like that on when it comes to art. Who would be inspiring? inspiring. There, was, there was so many, actually, like you could say that, because that, that's one of the reasons we get people on is because yeah. they're inspirational, you know, to, to us and others. Uh, Chris Lauder was probably yeah. really good. I got, I, I'm, I'm going by, to be fair, I'm going by what people have said to me, the listeners, of who, who they liked and why they liked them. I think a lot of people were inspired by Chris. Um, so Chris is the what, if, what would you call him, the owner of the Dublin School of Grinds yeah. Dublin Grind School um, and basically started the Grind School from from just doing grinds you know in, in the in, well, Cabin Teeley but then to Lorgan Park Hotel and, and created a, a school that's that's you know bigger than the Institute of Education as far as I know now it's crazy. Like it's a, it's basically taking some of the, it's showing people that you can take something that's a, a simple idea that's already been done. That's what a lot of people say. Ah, oh, you know, it's already been done. Even some people have said that the, the podcast, like, oh, I heard there's 800,000 podcasts. Why would you bother doing that? Cause I want to, do you mean like it's, it's, it's such a, it's an interesting thing. Cause he was going up against the government. Do you know, yeah. but like he's, his competition is the government. Um, so if you can take that on and not just win, but like, thrive get to a point where he couldn't grow anymore in the park hotel or whatever and he had to go uh, and then he's buying out his business partners he's getting private equity i think he was like how old? he was like 30 or something he it sounded like he'd been in business for like 50 years he's uh <laughs> very but like on the inspirational side he, he he's very well read you know lots of inspirational quotes and and you know good storyteller as well but um there really was a throughput of that, wasn't there? Or the, not throughput, like a thread through a lot of the guests reading a lot of the same stuff, even yeah. on the same books, but the same type of stuff. They're trying to feed their brain positive, uh, positive stuff all the time. Loads yeah. of stuff about um, lifestyle design and what they're reading. Kind of the 5 a.m. club was one that came up a couple of times. Mm. Uh, Tony probably- Robbins came up a lot as well. And people like to, to criticize Tony for, for different reasons, but it's clear that successful people read his stuff and whether it's it's they're not following it directly you know in, in like an instruction book or a manual or anything like that it's it's in the background it's it's motivation it's subliminal yeah it works and a lot of the people it's, it seemed like a lot of the people we spoke to were they they're kind of like outsiders so they're kind of like i don't think i'm sure i'm not sure that a they're bit different a bit different <laughs> some of them some of the people I talked to was like i don't know like uh i don't i don't know how you could get a job the way you're thinking mm. um, yeah but a lot of really successful entrepreneurs were you know couldn't get jobs or they yeah. were terrible employees yeah like even during the like during the year um i went for a, a different job and it was it was a job that was like i, I think it would, it would have been good at the money was great all that type of stuff um but when i didn't get it i was like i, I could obviously do that why wouldn't they give it to me that's what i started thinking and i started to think what, what's the the reason behind that? Are they looking for they're looking for something that I don't have, and it's not it's something I think it's something that I can't change. Mm-hmm. So what what do you do from there? So, I mean, so if you're lo- if you're looking for a certain person for a role, mm. and you want well, to, I know because I'm in I'm in recruitment. I know that the best some of the best people in so many ways will go for a job and not get it because sometimes, and I'm not saying not saying this to you because you just said you didn't get a job it is because they were too good you know are too good in different ways but maybe not as good in one way that they needed to be and it's actually a blessing in disguise that they didn't get the role so i appreciate when when hiring managers do that and say person but i don't think they'll fit here because 
the worst thing they want is to be hiring again in six months' time. Yeah. So people get down when they don't get interviews, when they don't get the job, but I wouldn't take it to heart. You just assume that the best person gets every job. Yeah. That's not the way it works. Not the way it works. Like you can't be the best at everything. And I think it was it's 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 a bit of a turkey shoot at the beginning of the, your career when you're leaving school because it's very easy to say okay he got six hundred points he got five ninety or there's a little bit more of that but when you get into the kind of the like right right now I do um you know, like I'm a program manager say it's kind of like it's it's a little bit more nuanced it's a little bit more like that track record is great for that but will it work in a different type of um uh environment yeah. you know I mean is uh, is um is the market knowledge more important than the brilliant stuff that that person's done and mm-hmm. we'll get somebody in who's a steady hand so sometimes i think that's that's what they're looking for as well you know mm-hmm. um so a very interesting stuff so that was the that was the kind of most uh, inspiring one for me actually one of the ones that I was particularly inspiring was garrett flower out there um with the the parking stuff and also i i just love the way he it kind of broke the mold with the uh, with the the entrepreneurship stuff, where he's just saying, "Okay, we're doing we're doing a bakery. We're going to do it right. Um, we're going to go wholesale. We're going to go retail. Um, we're hiring people. Like that's that's how the economy moves forward." And then when the government was like they always do, um, is trying to rip off entrepreneurs, rip off the people who are providing um, uh, providing employment for people, and try to tax them on rates and stuff like that. Um, he just said, actually, you guys want, you guys are going to reward tech entrepreneurs. Okay. I'll just go do that because mm-hmm. he is the difference. It's not when you're the entrepreneur, the spark that he has is the difference yeah. it's not that he was a great baker. It's not that I think he actually, he was quite good at baking, but that's, or, I mean, that's, <laughs> that's beside the point, Mark, right? He's the, uh, he's the one with the, the spark, right? So it doesn't matter if you give, uh, what is the, what is your, uh, John Lennon said? I'm an artist. Give me a, give me a, give me a tube and I'll get something out of it. Exactly. Yeah. Um, so I feel like he just said, okay, let's go do that then. And now I saw him looking at Ferraris there on uh, Instagram. So I hope <laughs> well. the guy told us it's not about the, it's not about stuff. Anyway, uh, that's another thing. A lot of these people have been on the podcast are like, oh yeah, it's not about the money. It's not about stuff. They're rolling around in, uh, in Jaguars. Um, Rolexes. <laughs> no, but the same could be said for, for, for Connor Sheridan, who's another excellent guest, you know, Madek, the restaurant business. Well, first of all, it was finance, you know, and then tech and then, you know, took the risk. But he is the key difference. And then he's with, with Squeeze, he saw a pain point in, in on the restaurant, on the restaurateur side of things. And, and he's gone. So essentially, that's a startup tech company. But he, again, is the key differences. So I'm interested in seeing what have these people got, you know, and, and how can you, you know, match that or, you know, following you know they've got this thing in america where they say if you can't see it you can't do it and i think they're talking about people in like the the, the ghetto or whatever and they're saying that there's not enough role models there yeah maybe the the anti-role models are there whatever um and i think there's a lot of anti-role models in in business as well when you get out of school there's people you'll probably work your first manager will probably be somebody who's kind of you know not not, not so inspiring not all of them. Mm-hmm. Like a lot of the big kind of corporate jobs, that will be the case, and they'll want you in on time. And uh, when you ask them for your <laughs> the holidays that you're due, they go, oh, "I'll have to check the calendar on that," and just making everything a little bit annoying. Uh, mm-hmm. You're still in school or something, Jim? Yeah, yeah. Uh, for the principal. Um, but I think that uh, these guys are uh, particularly inspiring here. One of the other things, the. Uh, one of the other guys that I think is really interesting as well, uh, Davin Hughes that we had on um, with the, the the grocery shopping app. That was just yeah, was that just at the at the COVID shutdown. That was like a, a inflection point for his business that we were just kind of capturing, just yeah. as it kind of taken off. And I think he might look back on that, or we might look back on that when that is a billion billion dollar company and say we talked to him just at the at the cusp there, which I think is yeah. interesting to go back and it's like a little time capsule. Yeah, it is. It's it's like keeping a, a blog or a diary doing doing this podcast. And and it's definitely time capsules and it's great. It's gonna be great to listen back on it, especially the year we've had. We had Devin with Buy Me. Yeah, they're gonna go on and do big things. So that was almost like a lecture in in economics and yeah. That was really good. <laughs> retail and groceries. Um so that was yeah that was that was probably the most I've learned in an hour. 
Yeah. Anything. <laughs> Packed it in there. Yeah. Uh, and uh, so that was a that was one for me that was uh, really interesting as well. One one more thing that I I thought I would uh, kind of call out on this was um, one that made the biggest personal impact on me, mm. uh, and it's one of the later ones. Uh, Michael Houghton on the from the Fire podcast. After we talked to him, I've taken massive action on my financial uh, setup. Like I've 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 met with uh, pension people. Um, I've set up investment accounts. I've set up an investment account for our, uh, my baby son. So when he uh, when he's a, a twenty year old, he'll have so much money to uh, go get a deposit for a house. He's not going to be in the position where most people are in their twenties. Well, yeah. I, mean, I mean, I'm doing my I'm doing everything I can. Yeah, you know that's all you can do. But yeah, uh, so I've got all my investment accounts set up. Everything's kind of on autopilot now. Um, like he was talking about, um, thinking about what, you know, retirement, what would be necessary, all that type of stuff. I've, I've, I've run into different challenges since then that I'd love to get a follow up with, with Michael uh, on some tax issues. Um, but <laughs> yeah. But again, he's, he's part of our, your network now. You know, you, you could probably just reach out and have a chat with him or just listen to his podcast, which is excellent. Yeah, it's great. Um, so that's that's who made the, the most personal um, impact on. Does anything come to mind? I know I didn't send that to you beforehand. Um, anything, any of the guests come to mind where you're like, okay, that's a big, made a big impact or you took some action after it? You know? um, I'd say like on the practical side of things, I think Dan Nugent and um, Amber Iwer, that I like that one because it was quite practical when it came to, to you know, Shopify and, and e-commerce essentially. So I like that one. That was a very good chat. It was a real clinic. It was like a he was, conversation. Sorry, it was a real clinic. Like he was, uh, yeah, like, but he was honest as well, and yeah. that's what I find the best guests tend to be the most honest as much as you can. You know, nobody's asking to see your bank account, but like trial, you know, trial business is trial and error. You know, entrepreneurship is trial and error. So, and he he was, he was open and saying what works, what doesn't work, and what they do, what they don't do. So that was good, good, good to know from a from an e commerce point of view. But yeah, I do think. Um, Michael Houghton's one is I'm gonna have to listen back to that as well. But a lot of people have said that to me as well. Yeah, they they picked that one out. That's the one that they because it makes them think about what they're doing and, and yeah. holds up a mirror and says, "Okay, I'm retiring in five years. What are you doing?" Yeah, yeah. it made me think. You know, thirteen was it? Thirteen, fourteen years. I'll be fifty. Even that alone, I was like, Jesus. That's not. Was, you know. You know, young man yeah so i really liked and, and talk about practical like i also really like the the kind of conversational ones just having a chat i like the, the one with john uh fitzgerald the artist yeah that was a great one that, that was just like having a chat you know with a, with a mate um and it kind of tied into the art business for you as well so that kind of maybe stands out for you yeah, yeah. And then Stephen Farrell, I really liked that one. That was a really, really good one. A lot of people like that as well. You might be the nicest person I've ever spoken to. Uh, yeah. Really like that one. <laughs> My mom loves yeah. that one, so. He really is. And that's, that's and I've talked to him a lot since then, and he, he is uh, as nice as, as, as he comes across. Um, but a lot of people were impacted by that um, as well, have said that to me. Um, Stephen Farrell's one, yeah. One of the things, like I've just got a whole list. You could go on for days here, but like I know, and I don't want to. I don't want to mention too many because I don't want to leave people out because yeah. actually everybody was was brilliant in their own right. And some of them, some of them really put or showed how big thinking can really work. Like even um, uh, when Mark Flood was on uh, the private equity, uh, he's like raised whatever fifty million in a fund and stuff like that. It's just it's it's so possible to do kind of anything that you want, and it's all about the um, uh, risking up. I think that might be the, the the way to go here. Um, so, Mark, we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna pause there. We're gonna have a go at the uh, the goals in twenty twenty one. I think this, it's going to be a huge year for for everyone if the vaccine works. Um, I know Pfizer, the CEO, sold sixty percent of his uh, his stock before this. Um, so we'll we'll see, the, we'll see how it goes. I've, I'm going to be on some more other uh, podcasts with conspiracies and stuff like that. But in the meantime, yeah. um, you and you and Shane Monaghan. Yeah, I mean Shane. Shout out to Shane with Lemur app. I've been so bad at, at uh, getting stuff up on that, so I'm gonna maybe that'd be that's on my list as well. Yeah, to to really up our game on that as well. Yeah, exactly. Um, so the um, yeah, we're gonna do a whole thing on 2021. I think hopefully it's, it's like the the roar in 20s. I was saying to my to my wife as well on our walk today. I was saying, you know, if you're college age and you've taken a year off, it's it's gonna get it's gonna be like 
get crazy next year. You know, that's what I'm hoping for those guys. Um, but I think the opportunities for us, it's kind of, I think we have to make a move into um, making sure we're the ones who benefit from this outsourcing of work. Um, mm. It's not, I know you're in recruitment, so you're kind of in a unique uh, place where you're, there's, you know how to do this. You would just have to go international. I think national businesses, uh, it's not the way to go anymore. We're going to have to think uh, more broadly and make sure that we're getting leverage from people all over the world before someone takes leverage on what we're doing. Yeah. Yeah, I think the, the, the whole world, essentially the whole world has just opened up um, literally over over a few months. And the only thing stopping, stopping it are barriers in the way is legalities and tax and stuff like that. But for sure, doing business globally should be the only the only way that people should be thinking if they're starting, particularly if they're starting something new. Also, I'm not a tax uh, <laughs> tax advisor, but if you start a company in Ireland and you sell to uh, America, you don't have to pay the VAT. So if it's a service business, mm. 20% cheaper, just saying. Again, Luke isn't a tax advisor. So. <laughs> Actually, that's what I was saying. I got some tax issues there. Uh, <laughs> I need to iron out uh, before the next podcast. Uh, we might leave it there for today. Uh, thanks very much, Mark, for jumping on this. It's been a little while since we recorded one. Um, so it's good to shake the ring rust off. Uh, yeah. Get up there. Uh, next week, we're going to be digging into our plans for 2021. Uh, we're going to risk up everything. I'm going to put it in put my money where my mouth is on a lot of these things. Uh, I think 2020 was for me, um, and I know that I'm fortunate uh, compared to a lot of people in the industry that I was in, um, but with the, the, the income we made and stuff like that, I think it's now time to put that back out in the market and try to get a return. That's yeah, where I agree. Let's, let's go for it, Mark. What do you think? Yeah, I fully agree. Okay, so 2020, good year? Good year. Good year. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I thought you were going to go, great year. <laughs> <laughs> no, well, I'm conscious that it hasn't been a good year for, for a, a lot of people. But, you know, you, you, you have to think of the positives. The, uh, the negatives are obvious. Like, we know the ne- negatives. Yeah. We're not saying it's been a good year better than any other year. But it's, when you think about the positives, you know. And also, when, um, when the, uh, the universe gives you lemons, you got to make lemonade, Mark. That's the way it is. Squeeze every dropout, guys, and we'll see you next week.